Hello, my name is Mark Fitzgerald and I'm Chair of the GINA Executive and a member of its Science Committee. I'm also a Professor of Respiratory Medicine at the University of British Columbia. Today I'm going to talk to you about the management of worsening of asthma and its hopeful prevention, but if an exacerbation does occur, what are the key uh, issues in terms of management both in the community and the emergency room. Ideally, a patient with asthma will have a written action plan written at an appropriate literacy level so they can understand how to manage the worsening of their asthma. Depending on what medications a patient is on, they may be able to adjust maintenance medication to reduce the risk of progressing to an exacerbation. Uh, the adjustment and treatment may involve, for example, a patient on inhaled corticosteroid, ideally quadrupling the dose of inhaled corticosteroids. If a patient is on a formoterol containing inhaler with either budesonide or beclomethasone, they may be able to adjust their treatment earlier in the exacerbation to prevent its progression. Patients containing a salmeterol and fluticasone combination inhaler may increase the dose of the inhaled corticosteroid or add a course of prednisone. For patients who fail to respond to these measures in the community or who do not have a written action plan, they may well need to be treated in a physician's office or in the emergency room. In both of these settings, it's important that the physician assesses risk factors that the patient may have for a worse asthma outcome. These risk factors would include, in particular, a prior history of intubation for near-fatal asthma, a history of need for prednisone in the past, suboptimal lung function, psychological or adherence issues, or poor social circumstance. A mild to moderate exacerbation may well be treated in a physician or urgent care setting. In this setting, the important uh, ABCs should be carried out so the patient's overall condition is assessed. If the patient is reasonably stable, initiation of short-acting bronchodilator therapy, controlled oxygen therapy if it's available, and uh, regular reassessment may be adequate. If the patient continues to be symptomatic or has a more severe attack at the beginning, they should proceed to the emergency department where a full assessment can be completed. In the emergency department, the patient should be given uh, short-acting bronchodilators, primarily with inhaled beta agonists. These can be both given by meter dose inhaler with a spacer or if there are problems with patients' manual dexterity, nebulizers may be used. For more severe exacerbations, uh, ipratropium bromide may be added. And in addition, patients who have a more severe exacerbation and not responding to initial therapy may benefit from intravenous magnesium. Most patients who come to the emergency room with an attack of such severity will require oral prednisone uh, and this should be administered early in their hospital stay. In addition uh, to these therapeutic interventions, uh, oxygen should be provided with uh, oximetry guiding the appropriate level of supplemental oxygen. Patients should not routinely be given 100% oxygen, uh, rather they should have the level of oxygen administered uh, controlled based on oximetry. Uh, most patients will respond appropriately to these interventions and can be discharged home. If patients are discharged home, they should be sent home with a five-day course of prednisone. And in addition, if the treatment has not already been initiated, they should be given uh, inhaled controller medication. This may either be inhaled uh, corticosteroids or patients with more moderate to severe asthma who already have been on inhaled corticosteroids may benefit from a combination of an inhaled corticosteroid and a long-acting beta agonist. It's very important that these patients at the time of their discharge also re receive a referral to be seen in follow-up by their family physician and in addition ideally they should be referred to an asthma education program where their approach and their management of the current exacerbation can be assessed and the patient can be better informed how to respond to a worsening of their asthma in the future. In addition to taking a history of risk factors, it is also important at the same time to begin an assessment using objective measurements either by spirometry or peak flow so that the patient's response to treatment uh, can be assessed and the, uh, their ability to be discharged 
can be evaluated based on their response to treatment and the final level of airflow obstruction uh, or improvement that's seen in the emergency department. At the time of the patient's discharge, either from a community setting or from the emergency room, uh, the opportunity should be taken to review the patient's inhaler technique. In many cases, uh, patients may be prescribed the appropriate medication, but no healthcare provider has taken the time or opportunity to show the patient how to use their inhaler. This is critical. In addition, there's a tendency among patients with asthma to stop taking their medication when they feel well, and this acute deterioration in their asthma control should be used as an opportunity to reinforce with patients the importance of taking regular controller therapy and not to use it in an episodic fashion. Uh, in conclusion, ideally patients will not experience exacerbations, especially if they've been given appropriate maintenance treatment, but despite such treatment, patients may well have a worsening of their asthma. It is important to empower and provide patients with an approach whereby they can intervene early to prevent an exacerbation, but in the event of an exacerbation occurring, most patients who come to the emergency room can be treated with regular bronchodilator therapy, uh, systemic corticosteroids, and can be discharged back in the community. It should also be noted that in this setting, antibiotics are not routinely required for asthma exacerbations. Uh, I'm delighted that I have been able to share with you some of the new management strategies for acute asthma. Uh, a fuller description of the management of asthma exacerbations can be found uh, with the full GINA report, uh, and we will provide you with the web link uh, at the completion of this video.